Good morning, Bill Davis here, technical trader with Charter Markets. It is 7.06 a.m. on Wednesday, April 27th. And I want to look at a few things this morning. First, I want to look at um, the NASDAQ 100 futures, and then we'll look and see what's moving. So let's look at the futures 100. As you can see, last night we made a video, I'm not sure the exact time, probably about nine or 10 o'clock at night, maybe earlier than that. I could be way off basis, but um, <clears throat> we talked about, you know, and many other videos stemming back from the beginning of April, we talked about you know, potentially testing these, these March lows, which as you can see from the futures, We've broke those March lows. We've even broke the February 24th, which was kind of a high mark or a pinnacle mark for a, a lot of stocks out there. And last night we talked about this 12,942 and 13,000 as a potential area for some demand. However, if, the, if in the event that this area were to uh, breach through and become uh, resistance, we're looking at 12,536 and 12,595 as a, another area of demand. And should this area appear as 13,000 area, should that hold, we anticipate this shooting back up to retest the 13,400. Now, a lot of this, as we all know, is going to depend on earnings and not just earnings, but how the market reacts to earnings. Because in bear markets, you know, good news is bad news and bad news is worse. So it really all depends on how the markets react. It doesn't even matter with the guidance. It doesn't matter with if they beat the earnings. The only thing that matters is, again, how markets are reacting and not so much why are markets reacting. Let's look at and see what's moving today. This is a, um, we'll look at a data, uh, a data point analysis chart that I, that I have that I use every day. I'm just making some edits real quick before I get on here. You can share this. I use this for my DOM ranges, which just stands for like dominance ranges. Uh, give me an idea of like some pen testing of, of ranges. You know, if a range were to breach or a range breaches, I want to have some statistical probabilities on how often that area is going to be relatively um, in my favor. So I'll give you an example of what I mean. Because sometimes when you mention breaches, people look at support and resistance on charge, but Yes, the, in the technical analysis aspect, yes, I do look at support and resistance areas as we did on the NASDAQ 100. But when I'm talking about my data points, it's a whole nother system. But if you add them together, then, you know, sometimes there's a, a relatively uh, greater importance to those. So right now, what I'm looking at is seeing what areas are breaching my dominance zones. And you can see my DOM zones up here. Uh, Dom A, you don't really need to worry about Dom B, but Dom A and Dom C are what I'm mostly focused on. And you can see um, Tesla's one that we've been watching. We anticipate anticipate Tesla getting back above this 919.88. We have SPX below one of our ranges, or let's see. So it looks like it's, actually, you know what? Let's just go ahead and take a peek at it here in a second. Um, SPX, well, the market's not open for SPX, so uh, that must have been last night, but we'll look at that. Uh, NKE, we also put uh, a trade alert out on NKE. We did one on Tesla as well. Both of those are on our uh, Facebook page. We also put those on Twitter. Netflix, we haven't been watching, but we should probably take a look at that. Uh, JetBlue is one that we looked at. We also put an alert out on that as well. So let's go ahead and just see. Let's um, let's look at Tesla. 
since a lot of eyes are on Tesla with Elon Musk and Twitter and, and the whole shebang here. So the, the levels are already marked on the chart. I did those yesterday. So let's go ahead and take a peek at Tesla. I don't find it with all my screens here. <clears throat> Hmm. I'm going to share this. I need to go back and make sure it's actually sharing. Okay. So Tesla is showing. This is an alert we put out yesterday when price was roughly about 900 or so, give or take. We can actually find that here. You can see uh, on Tesla. Just gotta find the chart here. Here it is. So Tesla was at 905 when we put this out, and this was yesterday at 12:30 p.m. where we were saying that um, you know Tesla's outside one of our ranges. We have we have a very high. Pro a probability of this closing within our 919.88 area. If we go back to Tesla, you can see right now it's at 892, but we definitely believe that this will close inside the 919.88 by the end of the week. Um, within our within our probabilities, you know, it's only closed outside of our probability window one out of six times in the last six weeks. And we also looked at Nike. And these got moved around. We put this alert out. I'm not sure the exact where it was exactly. I mean, we can go on Facebook and look at all those, but I don't think that's necessary. Unless you want to, you can go to, you can go to our Facebook page. It's uh, Chartered Markets right here at Chartered Markets. Let's go back to Nike. Nike, we definitely feel the 122.68 should be a close above that area by the end of the week. Facebook, we're bullish on Facebook. Facebook's been taking kind of a beating, but um, you know, just keeps getting sold off. But bullish on um, Facebook. We believe that the analysts and the speculations around advertising and all that is, is singular focus. Uh, we made many videos on why we believe that. We've made posts on why we believe that. And we um, did some postings on Twitter, which we believe that the market is going to get a surprise from Twitter. Microsoft. We posted this yesterday um, on Facebook and Twitter, but we also posted it on TradingView, just like the other ones we posted on TradingView also. Price was at 272 when we posted this. You know, our target's 282.57 to 291.11, which you see right here. And post market right now, it's at 282.31. So that's a pretty big, uh, pretty big victory for Microsoft. We were extremely bullish on Microsoft. Uh, Microsoft is one of our one of our firm's premier partners. You know, we use Azure Cloud a lot. Um, that was one of our reasonings of being behind Microsoft Azure and Databricks, Bricks, and uh, just an assortment of integrations and capabilities that they have that we you know that we use. Um, so that that was one of our reasons of maintaining a, a bullish outlook. And if you look here on this post, we also were mentioning, um, you know, in our last six weeks, our DOM areas. So we got an, we have a pretty good percentage rate on this four out of six times within our, within our ranges. Um, the mesh product is something that we've been diving into a lot and that works with the metaverse. 
Um, and you can see I expect Microsoft to have thrown exposure to cloud-based services and expansion and services. So that's why we were bullish on Microsoft. We've remained bullish on Microsoft as well. Now, of course, day trading and things of that nature, you know, that it, it comes with the territory. So one day you can be bearish, one day you can be bullish. It just depends on what the market gives you, how the markets are reacting and what your outlook looks like, and as well as your duration and time. Um, let's see. With the NASDAQ again, still holding that area. Let's go ahead and look at the um, our market mover. So, same names, you know, Tesla, S&P 500. Let's just look at S&P 500. Let me pull a chart up on that, and then we can take a glance at it. Let me put you back over to the SPX. Let's put our ranges on here so we have them. Just bear with me for a moment. Let me grab these ranges. I'm just going to plot these on here. Oh, that's Tesla. Let me get an idea of you know where we are. <clears throat> well, I think I did one of them twice. Yes, I did. My bad, it's early. All right, so here's our ranges for S&P 500. Let's get rid of the moving averages. Let's just go to extended hours, see what we look like here. So, Looks like we, we have a potential to, you know, it all depends on what the futures do as well. Futures look like they're a bit, they're dying down a little bit. Let's see what they look like. So then we can go back and compare it to the S&P 500. Uh, let's put a, let's put a 20 on there and a 50. So I'll just put a, um, a 20 day moving average, which is blue and a 50, which is red, and just trying to get some consensus on how the markets are reacting. It looks like we're gonna go back down and potentially test this area, this, uh, this range of ours down here. <laughs> go back and look at SPX, we'll put the 20 and 50 on here. Yeah, so there's a good chance that we're gonna hit that 41.90. And if we look at, If we look at the, uh, whoops, not that one, S&P 500 futures. The S&P 500 futures is not quite there yet to the lows, but uh, it's getting there. So it looks like, you know, they may be testing this March low and this potential February 24th low. Just got to keep an eye on the S&P 500. Um, you know, if Apple tanks it really bad or the markets decide to, to just to continue this margin um, deleveraging, even if Apple has great earnings, we'll definitely break these low areas. So just keep that in mind. Um, about all I wanted to look at. Let me look at one more thing. Keep an eye also on also keep an eye on J and J and Wind Resorts. They keep going in and out of our of our DOM range. Let's look at um let me pull J and J up real quick and just see what what going on with this
All right, so it's been testing the, uh, looks like maybe the upper range. Let me see what wind resorts. 69. And it looks like wind resorts has been testing the lower range. So just keep eye on those. Upper range for J and J is 186.31. Lower range for win data point is 6702. So just you know keep eye on those. And you still got the um you, know, you still got your Tesla, your Nike, your JetBlue, your Intuit. Into it is one that's been uh, moving around as well. It's near the low area. So right now it's at like 419.47 and our low range is four is 415.60. So keep an eye on that one as well. All right, other than that, that's all the video that I wanted to, oh, I wasn't sharing it, was I? Crap, let me go ahead and share this again, I'm sorry. So here's the ones that right now are outside of our areas. Looks like, um, let's see. Tesla's dancing around with our, our Dom C level. You gotta keep eye on SPX when it opens. Nike's playing with our 122 area currently at 121 so it's almost back within our range that we mentioned yesterday in our in our alert same with tesla tesla's at 887 but i definitely think it's going to be above that 9.1988 before the end of the week uh netflix is dancing around with our lower dom range so that's 197.09 jet blue is one we also put an alert out on the low range is 1182 which we believe it'll close above and right now it's at 1140 so, um, and then some that keep bouncing in and out of the range are wind resorts around that low level, 6702, J&J. &J. It's been bouncing around that, that 176 area, but it's well off of that level now. And into it is... Um, Let's see, it's dance around that, looks like the high area. Actually, let me look at into it on here, um, 419. Actually, it's 419, right? So after hours or pre-market. So watch that DOM level at 415. Yeah. So just some, just some stocks to look at. All right, sorry about that, I wasn't sharing earlier. I uh, have to eat a little better like that to make sure that I'm sharing. And um, that's it. Have a good trading day. And um, if anything were to flag in during the day where uh, a DOM market, a DOM level or something gets broke or something like that, I'll make sure to uh, try to put a post out there. But honestly, the post is either going to be on Facebook. Um, well, it's going to be in several places. It's going to be on Facebook. It's going to be on Twitter and it's probably going to be on trading view. It just depends on how quickly I can get it out there and, and, um, you know, how timely that post is going to be to where it still has relevance. Other than that is Bill Davis, technical trader with charter markets. Have a good day. Safe trading. Talk to you soon.